Joining me now to discuss is retired Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood, Heritage Foundation Senior Research Fellow for Defense Program. Great to see you tonight, sir. Um, the New York Times yeah, is saying with you. there is an audio recording of this because John Kerry is saying um, that it's unequivocally false. And I would just say, well, why don't we do an investigation and listen to the audio and get to the bottom of it? Well, that would be fact finding, right? I mean, actually it speaking truth. So, you know, this, yeah, this audio is uh, Zarif, you know, having an interview with an academic who's doing an oral history. The recording was supposed to be note taking, but somehow it got released. You know, was there an agenda in place? We don't know. But there is this evidence. And it sounds like Zarif is really kind of venting or complaining that he was nearly never in the decision making loop between the Ayatollah and the uh, Revolutionary Guard, you know, sorts of forces. And so, you know, not a lot of decision making process. So it could be that he was actually pumping Biden for information, you know, about what's going on. And uh, and according to reports, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Kerry, uh, that he shared what the Israelis were undertaking in Syria, which was just a complete uh, abrogation of responsibility and really a betrayal of a longtime U.S. ally. Mm, well, speaking of betrayal, uh, there's one congressman, Michael McCall, uh, who had something to say about it. Take a listen. To me, this uh, we need to uh, open an investigation. This it appears to be somewhat treasonous to be meeting with the enemy and cutting back deals and sharing information, intelligence related to Israel and its efforts against Iran proxies in Syria. Uh, having said that, we don't know all the facts and uh, I rest assured I will find out. Now, the administration is saying, oh, well, look, the, the conversations they were having, the information uh, that we're talking about here. Well, it wasn't a secret. Well, you know, it, it's yeah, I mean, there's lots of reporting that goes on the news. But when a, when a government official, especially at the level that uh, former Secretary of State uh, John Kerry was working at, that carries different weight. You've got different access to different sources of information. You can speak more authoritatively and it just has a whole lot more impact. So you were deliberately undermining the United States uh, government position, the administration that was currently in charge uh, and, and sabotaging, sabotaging the efforts of the Trump administration to deal with Iran. And if this had happened under the Obama administration's watch, or if it was happening now under President Biden's watch, the left would be all over this. Yes, but they somehow would. because it was a Democrat and it was John Kerry, well, it's nothing they really, really need to get worked up about. But, you know, it's undermining, sabotaging what the former president was trying to do against just the most heinous actors, you know, supporting terrorist groups uh, in their constitution, they're calling for the elimination of the state of Israel. Israel, supporting almost daily attacks on that country. Uh, you just you wonder what Kerry was thinking when he's uh, providing that sort of information. And if the tables were turned, there would be a lot of pressure to resign. You do have Republicans saying that John yeah. Kerry should resign as climate envoy, um, but it doesn't appear that he has any intention of doing that. No, not at all. I mean, you know, it's uh, what's you know, what I like to say and do is good for me and everybody else who might be a critic is just completely off base. So I right. don't expect any effort to resign on this. And they'll just fend off these kind of criticisms as being a disaffected right wing extremist sort of thing. And they'll they'll move on, which mm. should cause us to be concerned about the nature of negotiations that are ongoing in Vienna between the multinational team working with the Iranians regarding this nuclear deal. Yeah, it's sort of like when he is fighting for uh, the climate policies of the administration. He doesn't want to see the climate change anymore, yet he rides around in, in private jets, right? Big exactly. footprint there, right. carbon right. footprint. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.